Today we are talking with Jerry Wolgamuth, who is the Director of Communications for the Susquehanna Conference. One of his responsibilities is dealing with the press, and that can especially be difficult in times of crisis. Normally, you are on the other end of the camera here, Jerry, as our producer of the program. I'm on the hot seat today. <laughs> I'd rather be in back of the camera, but, but go ahead, do your thing. But I appreciate it <laughs> that you're w willing to be on this end of things for now. Sure. Um, so sometimes whenever people call and they get a, or a crisis happens at their church, they get a little flustered and they call you. Mm -hmm. um, what are some ways that you help to guide them through that process of dealing with the press, mm -hmm. especially in times of crisis? We do ask our churches that when they have a visit from the press or, they, or, they are, or there's been an incident where there might be press attention, we ask them to call me. Uh, we talk about it. I learn what they know at that point. Um, and then I like to say that I come alongside, I don't take over. I don't think, if, if I were a press person, I wouldn't really want to talk to me. This guy <laughs> in Mechanicsburg, I'd want to talk to somebody at the church. Um, but I've been trained to talk to the press and, uh, and uh, I, I'm provided by the conference to take some of the heat and take the weight off of the local church in responding to the press. What's one example that comes to mind of um, a time that you had to do that? There have been a few, <laughs> uh, and, and it's not always in crisis situations. Sometimes uh, I'm responding to the press on something that's a very positive kind of story, but, but often it's about crisis. Someone being accused of a wrongdoing or some kind of an event that's been catastrophic mm -hmm. that we need to respond to the press about. Uh, but I come alongside and I will speak to the press for the church. Uh, that's my responsibility to speak for the church and for this annual conference of, of 900 churches. Uh, but there are some cases where I have s said to the pastor after we have talked about the situation and talked about some talking points, if they are comfortable talking to the press, I'd be glad to be there with them and let them talk. Um, I, I've felt comfortable in doing that in the past. And um, uh, so, so I'm in the position of coming alongside, not taking over. Mm -hmm. I'm there as a resource for persons to help uh, even out a situation that's suddenly become kind of wrinkled. One such example where you came alongside a pastor um, is whenever there was a bombing in Uganda where some of our, um, our parishioners had been on a mission trip. Mm -hmm. um, so can you share some of what you learned from that experience? Well, it's my favorite story and it was the most stressful by far that I've ever been involved with. I got a call on a Sunday night about seven o'clock uh, from uh, Reverend Kathy Kine, now she's Dr. Reverend Kathy mm -hmm. Kine, uh, saying that there was an incident in Uganda that uh, some of the people who were visiting, who were on a mission trip from her church, Christ Community, mm -hmm. um, there was a bombing at the table at which they were sitting with some native persons, uh, three of whom were killed. Uh, the three from Christ Community Church were badly injured but did not lose their lives. Um, I showed up at the church the next morning at about 7.30 and already parked in the parking lot were six uh, uplink trucks mm -hmm. <laughs> with lots of news people from really uh, all over the East Coast uh, asking for the story. Kathy Kind was the pastor of the church, uh, Christ Community. Um, she was uh, in seminary uh, working toward her Doctor of Ministry degree and chose the story to write up as her thesis. Uh, in a booklet form now that we have published on the website. It's called Can We Give a Witness? And it speaks to this particular situation, but it also talks about how we can use very stressful moments with the press to tell our story. Mm. Often when I'm contacted by the press, they want the facts. They want to know everything that I know or don't even know. Uh, and I have to say, you know, we live by a cardinal rule, and that is that we want to do no harm, we want to do good, and we want to stay in love with God. And when we don't know all the facts, we don't speak to something that hasn't been proven. And so to protect everybody involved, we must withhold the rest of what I would say uh, until we know the facts. Um, I don't like to be in an adversarial position with the press. 
Um, they're good folks. They have a job to do. Uh, they're owed a story, um, but only when that's appropriate and only when we know the truth. So the first um, contact with the press is usually kind of short. Now when we know the facts, then it becomes a different matter, and, and we, have to talk, we have to talk about the kind of situations where someone's been accused. Um, but this is a good read, I, and I would suggest it to anyone who wants to learn about how, to, how, how, to, how, to, how do we react as a church in a crisis situation. And uh, it's on the website for you to download, and you can uh, should be able to um, put it on a, a smartphone or on a tablet and uh, read it at your leisure. It is 104 pages, but it's very readable. Um, it, it will be not only interesting and informative, but an encouragement to you as we seek to make the world a better place. What are just maybe two quick tips that you can share about um, best ways to deal with the press? Be kind. And don't say no comment. <laughs> that's, that's the first rule. Because the minute you say no comment to a press person, that means you know something more and I'm going to find out what it is. Uh, be courteous. Um, uh, the, as I've said, they're, they're good folks. They, they do the best they can. Uh, often they make mistakes. Uh, but in dealing with the press, sometimes we have to say, you know, I can't really talk to you about that now, but I can tell you this. Mm -hmm. And we get a chance to say what we're about as a church, what we believe, and why we believe that's important in this particular situation that we're addressing. Mm -hmm. I, my, my talk to um, a group of pastors who had gathered for the clergy retreat uh, about two weeks ago was entitled, When the Press Calls, It's Not Necessarily a Bad Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I have stories of, of some great witnesses some great witnessing that we have been as a church in times of crisis in responding to the press because it gives us a chance to talk about what we believe, why we believe it, believe it and why that's important in this particular situation. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that the conference is prepared for those type of situations? I am very grateful for um, something that I have found to be very important, but I'm very grateful to be able to talk about our safe sanctuaries policy. I can tell the press, you know, there is no way we can totally eliminate every possibility of wrongdoing. But we think we've done due diligence with, an, with a uh, safe sanctuaries policy where we have trained 4,500 people around this conference of 900 churches by a group of about 23 persons who do training. Uh, and I am very grateful to be able to talk about that. And, and the press is interested and sometimes asks more questions even just about that. All right, well, thank you for sharing. And um, if you would like to learn more about crisis communication and how you can be a witness through the press, you can check out my Facebook page at Susquehanna Express. <laughs>